You're listening to the 49 Carats Podcast, a 49ers goldmine production with Stephanie Sanchez. What's going on, everyone? Welcome to another edition of the 49 Carats Podcast. I'm your host, Steph, and joining me today for... 49 Carrots podcast second episode of the day is a very special guest, 49ers team reporter, Lindsay Pilates. What's going on, Lindsay? Thank you so much for joining the show today. Yeah, thanks for having me, Steph. We're uh, we're headed into Chargers week, so it's perfect timing. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And I know you enjoyed your your bye week. Congratulations on the engagement. <laughs> Thank that's, you. Yeah, it was pretty uh, big news right there. Yeah, it was a good little break off from football, but uh, back to reality. I'm I'm back in the Bay. I actually just got back from a 49ers community event, so I'm super nice. stoked to just get the second half of the season going. Yeah, absolutely. As is everyone else, right? Um, a reason that I thought like it'd be great to have you on, you know, the pod, you know, knowing that this is your first season of being the team's reporter, right? I. Th- feel like it's a great opportunity for the faithful to get to know you because I'm sure you've come across plenty of Niner fans like in the first mm-hmm. half of the season we've gotten to know uh, a lot of people but it's really a chance for us to get to know you and so it, why don't you tell us a little bit about your journey and in, in sports media and how it brought yeah. you to the 49ers. Uh, yeah so this is actually my fifth on air job now. So I have definitely um, made my like cross country tour. I started in a really small town in Colorado, like 40 miles from the border of Utah. Most people don't don't know it exists, but it's called Grand Junction, Colorado. Um, Actually started in news, never wanted to do news, but it was just kind of a way in. Um, so I spent three years there um, and got to cover my first Super Bowl. I was, I think, 24 years old when I got to do that. So it was pretty cool. And it was at Levi Stadium. So my life has come full circle. <laughs> um, awesome. But yeah, that was really cool. I got to work in Green Bay and pretty much travel with the Packers across the country for two years. Then I had a year stint in uh, at Fox Sports San Diego then I went to Sacramento and now I'm here. So this is my favorite job by far. And I'm just, I'm so stoked to be here. So I'm a California native. I don't want to leave my home state ever again. (laughs) (laughs) Awesome. I had no idea that like you spent some time in Colorado. I'm actually in Colorado now. I've been here for like uh, close to two years now. So yeah, that's pretty cool. Nice. Um, Yeah. But yeah, it sounds like you've been kind of all over the place. But uh, as you are, I'm happy that you're you're with the 49ers now. Um, and so, you know, being that you, you've you seen other teams before, you know, you mentioned you've been around the Packers as well. And so yes. with this team, what was kind of your first impression being around, you know, this group of particular guys? Um, You know, I think organizationally, just every team is different, right? Um, And I think just the 49ers, from top to bottom, best organization I've ever been around. And um, this is my first time working on the team side, but I can tell you, you tell everybody, um, the organization is as good as advertised, just such an amazing culture. And I think it is very, very much represented in the locker room. Um, I know, you know, there have been other other team reporters and stuff that were here for a long time. I got to meet Kiana. She's awesome. And I know the organization really loved her. And I'm really happy that I've got a really amazing welcome when I got here. And I I really, truly was given the opportunity to build the relationships with the team that is here. And they're awesome, honestly. Um, you know, kind of what you see, it, those are those are the people that you you get to interact with every day. I think everybody's very humble, very grateful to be here. And I think that just makes for a really, really great locker room. And there's honestly some really amazing personalities. There's a lot of funny guys in that <laughs> locker room. So. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely saving the funny questions <laughs> yeah. to the end, but I definitely have them. So stay tuned for that, guys. But 
Yeah, I, I think, you know, a lot of us sometimes forget that, like, these guys are human beings, right? And, like, you, it's very cool, you know, for you to be able to be in the building and meet these guys, like, on a personal level and, and know them beyond, you know, what they do on the field. Um, and that kind of leads me, I guess, into my next question, because I remember, like, last season and ever since COVID, like, there was a break of not being able to be with the guys in the locker room so your access was somewhat limited mm-hmm. everything and done so, virtually yeah yeah and so now I believe this is the first season where all of those restrictions have been kind of lifted you know mm-hmm. with the team and you get the, this access to the players so I think that's cool that like as you know it being your first season with the team like you're getting that access so glad you're in the experience experience that um but what have you seen from this team and Obviously, they've dealt with a lot of injuries in the first half of the season, some shaky moments here and there. But I feel like they've really done a lot to, you know, um, make adjustments to all of the injuries that have happened. And, you know, they have the motto of next man up. And, you know, how, how have you seen that transpire in the locker room and and that, uh, you know, attitude come to life? You know, I think what is so great is that, the team has found a really amazing balance of, like you said, that next man up mentality, but then also still being very empathetic and caring about caring about their teammates that can't play for whatever injury they're going through. Um, And I think that the next man up mentality works because they're all playing for each other. And, and I think that's why you've seen a lot of different configurations of players work on the field I mean like you take that week eight game against the Rams like we were Mm -hmm. down our first you know Debo Samuel and Juwan Jennings but you know of course in comes Christian McCaffrey who absolutely does it all um and I you know I feel like it's just been that week after week you know you see Jimmy Ward kind of dealing with that hamstring issue for the first four weeks and then playing, you know, being out for a few weeks and then playing with the club on his hand. And then you see Talanoa Hufanga really step up. I just feel like because everybody has this like win first mentality, win for the team instead of themselves, that's why all those configurations work and like why there's such great camaraderie. And like, you see when someone does go down on the field, everybody is so just looking to see what they can do for their teammate if they need them to step up or if they need them, you know, a hand off the field. I, I just feel like they're, everybody is there for each other. And that is kind of the thing that keeps everything going on this team. Yeah, I definitely agree. And like, you can, you can see that even from the fan perspective, you know, and, and the 49ers put out, you know, great content, like the mic up videos and all of that. And like, so you get small glimpses of what it's like being out there on the field and how these guys communicate with each other, the type of relationship they have with each other. And so like me as a fan, and I'm sure for a lot of other fans too, like that's pretty evident even from the outside looking in. Right. And so you know, you kind of echoing those same sentiments, I I think says a lot about, you know, it's not just what they show on video or on the field, like it goes beyond that as well. So I I think that's awesome uh, with this team. And it seems like they're all pretty close. But given that they're so close, and you mentioned Christian McCaffrey, I do want to ask you about Christian, because I mean, obviously, that was a huge, you know, trade that the 49ers made it, it really got the, the the fans buzzing and so yeah. I'm curious from the team's perspective like <laughs> were you around any players like when that news broke and if so like how was that reaction so honestly like I feel like kind of like the misconception is that like we know ahead of time like we like you know when you saw Adam Schefter's tweet like I think that's pretty much when all of us found out and I mean I remember I was like sitting on my couch at home and I was like no way and I I think you kind of saw that on it was honestly a genuine reaction I I think my favorite social media reaction was Drake Jackson's girlfriend uh, posting about him on TikTok. Like that was 100% genuine. And I mean, you just saw people kind of popping off on Twitter. You know, I I remember Tabor was like, I think it was like, holy moly. And then I saw something come up from George Kittle. Then Joe Staley popped in the convo. Like 
everybody was just so excited. And on that first day, like I can tell you, like the building was buzzing. Like everybody was super excited. I mean, like I'm on the, you know, I'm technically part of the marketing team. So like we handle like, you know, there's people on my team that handle social media. I do like the on-camera stuff and the writing and just there was a buzz. It was one of the most fun and hectic work days I've had here so far, but you kind of live for those days. So that, that was really cool. I, I will remember that day for a very long time. <laughs> yeah. Oh, absolutely. I'm, I'm sure. And I mean, I'm sure, yeah, it sounded like the team was already excited for him, but how do you feel like that changed or even became more enhanced when he went on his hat trick performance uh, yes. against the Rams. Like I can only imagine how much more like the team embraced him uh, as part of their team after that. I think there's just like a mutual excitement on both sides. Cause I got to interview Christian on the very first uh, day that he was in the building and he just, rattled off so many names of guys that he was like, I'm so excited to play with everybody. And then was like, I'm excited for Trent Williams. I'm excited for Kyle's use check, you know, just like rattling off everybody's names. And I feel like that on the other side, everybody was super excited to be playing with him. And then, yeah, you see him go and score, you know, have this historic game and score three touchdowns. And yeah, everybody's really hyped. <laughs> and I mean, and let's just add in like Debo and Jawan and Kyle Juszczyk like in week 10. And like, yeah, I mean, that's going to be so exciting. I, I think you're going to have a very dynamic offense in the second half of the season. And I'm like, okay, is it Sunday night football yet? I'm so right. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that's kind of what we're all expecting, right? Like, I know, like, fans are are seeing all these players come back from injuries. And, you know, after the that game against the Rams, it kind of feels like that, that same kind of ascension yeah. that we saw, like, in 2021, right? So definitely some excitement for the second half of the season. But given that, you know, there are a lot of players getting healthy and, you know, the 49ers do want to make a push at the playoffs, uh, you know, come the second half of the season. What did you like? Do you know at all what the 49ers maybe might have wanted to improve during the bye week? Or if you don't know, like uh, from your perspective, what, what do you think uh, they could have needed to improve? Yeah, you know, I think they've like ta they've talked about it a little bit, you know, obviously getting healthy. I think just after the wear and tear of playing eight straight weeks of football, getting healthy, just relaxing, resting, rehabbing, 100% the top priority. But, you know, you've heard Jimmy Garoppolo talk about it. You've heard George Kittle say it. They just want to kind of get that faster start on offense. And I think the Rams game was kind of a perfect example of what they want to be doing every single game. And the third quarter was a little bit of a point of emphasis for them as well. And then, you know, you saw them in the third and fourth quarter of that Rams game put up 21 unanswered points. So basically what you saw in the Rams game playing that complimentary football, we just want to see that, you know, for the rest of the season. And I think you're going to get that. that. Yeah. Like we More want of that <laughs> guys, guys are coming back healthy. I think, you know, cross your fingers, um, you know, and I, I think obviously the talent is there. So I, I'm just really excited to kind of see it all play out and, you know, from week 10 and on. And I, I think you're going to see that. Okay, good. Cause I'm like, I hope they're not gaslighting me. Yeah, I hope no, this is for no. real. <laughs> all right. All right. I'm all in on this team and like, yeah. you know, you see them fighting out there every day yeah. and like oh, yeah. battling to get better. I mean, I, I just think it's, it's only a matter of time. Right. So. Right. And I think that makes the, the second half of the season and like being able to stack those wins, like it starts feeling a whole lot better. Like you, you start feeling yourself and then you don't know what can happen. Like in the playoffs, like they're going to, you know, they'll be on fire by that point, hopefully. So yes, yes, <laughs> definitely feel it. All right. Well, we got some comments here that we'll get to really quick. A lot of people enjoying the interview so far. Ty over here asks, who is the next player to be interviewed? I don't know if you could give <laughs> us a little hint or something. But um, okay, so I'm actually waiting to see who, because I host a cart talk segment, which I hope you guys have been tuning into. Um, I am able to grab a guy after practice usually, and they let me, you know, take them for a couple turns in the golf cart. I'm waiting to see who my guest is. So actually that one I'm not sure 
And I am actually waiting to hear back on the podcast guests too. So I don't actually know, but I think I'll know by Wednesday. So stay tuned. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you're going to have to, you're going to have to <laughs> put your notifications on for 49ers Twitter and, and just wait and see, uh, just like out of curiosity, when you do those like cart rides, like, do you have set questions already? Do you kind of have to wait to find out like which player and you kind of tailor it to the player? Um, it's a little bit of both. Um, I sometimes request somebody and then I sometimes just tell our wonderful PR staff to surprise me. <laughs> um, it's actually a little bit harder when uh, when I ask them to surprise me. But when I know who it is, I do a little bit of research and then I kind of just throw out a question or a topic and then you just sort of let the conversation develop because what I've realized is I can do all the research I want but guys always have little tidbits about themselves that they end up sharing and you know you're not going to find that anywhere on the internet like it's just something that kind of comes up organically and I, I love hearing about just their different hobbies outside of football and things that interest them so and that's actually been one of my favorite segments to do. Yeah, no, for sure. I enjoy watching those. And I'm sure for them, it's like kind of refreshing too, because like <laughs> it's all day, like football, football, football. And then like, yeah. you know, they get a little break. They get to talk about themselves a little bit yeah. and like their interests. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure they love that as well. Um, all right, let's get to some fun questions. Over sure. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Who is the funniest player on the team, in your opinion? hands down no contest Spencer Burford he's really hilarious yeah um honestly like he can make anything funny or fun um I actually got to we're doing these um a new segment we're doing is uh Toyota one-on-ones that they kind of just took a pause because I think of the pandemic or mm -hmm. I don't know but we're just starting them up um, and we got to go with Leroy Watson, Jason Poe, and Spencer Burford to a haunted house, <laughs> you know, kind of for the Halloween the holiday. And Spencer was hilarious. He was having screaming contests, like with the monsters in the maze and trying to scare Leroy and Jason in the maze. And then he'd get scared and like, Oh my gosh, absolutely hilarious. If you guys haven't watched that, it's basically just him mic'd up going through a Halloween maze and you'll <laughs> know exactly what I'm talking about. He's hilarious. That's awesome. I definitely saw one of those clips. So I'm going to check out the, the full yeah. thing. And then that's on YouTube, correct? On the 49ers Yes, it is. YouTube 49ers page. YouTube or our, uh, I think just on the, the website. Yeah, but super, super funny. And I think him, Jason, Poe, and Leroy got scared a few more times than they thought they were actually <laughs> going to be scared. So... It's good stuff. <laughs> oh my god, that's hilarious. That's kind of surprising, actually. For some reason, I thought it'd be like George Kittle or something, but no, they were. We took like a younger group, and they were they were perfect because they were all really hyped on Halloween. And I I guess like the maze we went to, every Bay Area team has been through it, so we were the last oh, wow. ones to go. Yeah. So and then I went through the maze, and it was really scary. So. <laughs> We didn't get any footage of that, though. No, no, no. <laughs> Not for the faint of heart. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, OK, so we talked about the funniest guy, but I'm mm -hmm. sure there's some guys who are a little more like closed off. I'm a bit of an introvert myself sometimes. So who is the most either intimidating or introverted player on the team? And sometimes those could be the same person, right? Like, <laughs> I don't really think intimidating would be the right word I think maybe softer spoken a little bit um I'm trying to think of um you know I think Brandon Ayuk is a little bit softer spoken oh, yeah. but he has so many off the field interests and I feel like if he starts talking about that he I had him on the podcast with Juwan Jennings and I feel like the two of them obviously because they're in the same position group and they're good friends really mm -hmm. vibed off each other and BA like has a ton of interest. He's like, was talking about just getting into photography and how he came up in football. And I found him so easy to talk to, but I think it's, you just have to like, you know, I don't know, like if you get tired of like talking about football eventually, you know, I feel like everybody kind of hits that wall. So I think as long as you can talk about something else, like pretty much everybody's super willing to, I don't know, share stories about themselves and, like I said, a lot of these guys are super interesting. So you just have to hit the right topic. <laughs> and and kind of on that note, 
uh, Callie here has a question. Is Bosa really that laid back in real life? Yeah, he is. Honestly, like, I think he obviously is very serious about his training and football. Um, but I see him, you know, in locker room and just like the dynamic that he has with his teammates. Oh, my light went out. Whoops, didn't charge this thing. Um, and yeah, he's he's a really easygoing guy. I think, especially on the defensive line, very well loved and well respected. But yeah, he's a he's I think a, a really easy person to hang out with from what I've seen. That's awesome. Yeah, it it has always struck me that way that he's yeah. like very very football focused and like you know it. it Obviously, he takes good care of his body. <laughs> That's like a 24-7 kind of thing, it looks like. So that doesn't surprise me at all. Um, let's see. Next question here. Who has the best singing voice? I know okay. they be singing in, in those locker rooms. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I actually think it's one of our practice squad members, Leroy Watson, has a really, really good singing voice, but there's actually quite a few musically inclined guys in the locker room. Um, I found out Spencer Burford and Oren Burks play the drums, and I believe Christian McCaffrey plays the piano. So, like, I wouldn't be surprised if there's yeah. other vocalists in there. Um, so, I think we need to get like a jam session going with them just to see who, who ends up with a really good karaoke or singing voice. I, I feel like there's definitely more more guys out there for sure. That needs to be an episode right yeah. there. Just, yeah, just yeah. get them I'm in the studio, working. see what they could come up with. <laughs> yeah, just lay out instruments and a see a music see. video or something. Yeah. That would that would be pretty epic. <laughs> All right. Um, okay. If you were in a zombie apocalypse and you had to choose just one player to accompany you, I imagine a lot of players, like I, I'd probably pick any player, honestly, but if you had to pick one, <laughs> who would you pick in a zombie apocalypse to accompany you? Okay. I feel like this is a toss up because I feel like Dre Greenlaw just like stacks the tackle. So I would imagine I would want somebody like him to just continually tackle the zombies or you have Nick Bosa who can, you know, is, you know, leading the league in sacks or I think first or second in the league in sacks. So I feel like either one of them you'd probably survive the apocalypse with. So I go so. One or two right there. <laughs> any any one of those guys, I think, you'd, yeah. you'd be just fine with. <laughs> yeah. Or like um, Williams. I'm sure you would want him to block all the zombies. You know, I think I think any of those three. I mean, ne never even thought about that, but that, yeah. that's a good point right there. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's a good one. I obviously um, gave this a lot of thought. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, seriously. But honestly, you could probably mention any player. I'd be like, yeah, yeah. okay. <laughs> All right, we, let's get to some other questions from the viewers here. Melissa here asks, Lindsay, what's a more fun interview for you to get to know the players like CMC? Who is new to the building or a surprise interview that you handled? Um, I think, honestly, I thought – having the privilege of uh, interviewing Christian McCaffrey on like his first day in the building was really, really cool. Um, just because he's such a big name, not just within the organization, but across the league. Um, and he was, he was so great and so willing. And I think just his excitement uh, about being, you know, in this organization made that a very, not only fun interview, but really easy there was like no trouble connecting with him and he just had a lot to say. And I think just because he has a history with the Bay area, it's easy to talk about this area and, and the ties with the organization run pretty deep. So I feel like that was like probably one of the more fun interviews that I've been involved with for sure. Yeah. That is definitely not surprising. Have you gotten a chance to like interview or talk to like Joe Montana, Jerry Rice, you know, those guys. So Jerry Rice, I haven't interviewed him like not a traditional interview. I host or I emceed uh, one of our 49ers foundation events and Jerry is very, very involved. So I've definitely interacted with him a lot and handed my mic over to him because he's a great MC, um, but definitely not a traditional interview. And I have not met Joe Montana yet, but I am looking forward to the day because 
he's a goat so <laughs> oh yeah I'm, yeah I'm sure yeah I'm I'm surprised actually because I feel like you guys he he's at the games pretty often right he is, like, yeah he's we've been at the same games but we were doing a pregame we a regular pregame show for a lot of our home games so a lot of the time I'm running around so I just I yeah. miss a lot of people that I normally would love to say hi to <laughs> yeah um jc here asks is traverius ward quiet <laughs> no not at all he's actually so if you haven't watched my cart talk with him i think he is one of the most interesting people on the team because um you know i talk a lot about the guys who have off the field interest and he has so many he likes reading he likes watching cartoons he was telling me he just got into photography and got a cool camera he is he loves to try new foods like so i feel like he's just all over the place and you could probably talk to him about anything so no i actually do not think he's quiet at all yeah maybe maybe a little softer spoken but he no he's so interesting and just yeah he's super friendly too so yeah i i could see that yeah. i've seen some of his like locker room interviews or whatever and he he looks like pretty pretty uh funny and, and things like that oh, let's see who okay, we talked about who's the funniest, but JK here, if it happens to be a different person, who is the biggest prankster in the locker room? I'm trying to think. Um, I feel like George Kittle isn't necessarily a prankster, but he's super fun. I feel like if he if someone were to do a good prank, George definitely would be one of the culprits, and then maybe trying to think i don't know i feel like a lot of the guys like jimmy ward maybe would be down like jimmy ward's a lot of fun i could totally see him pulling a prank yeah i don't know i mean even like alfredo alfredo like loves oh, to yeah, make yeah. jokes yeah i feel like you could go a lot of different ways with that but i actually haven't seen a prank being executed in the locker room so i'll keep you posted <laughs> okay yeah it'd be great if you like caught it on camera or something just like <laughs> plan planned it out <laughs> i'm sure i'm sure it'll happen one of these days <laughs> yeah milano asks what is the most surprising thing you had to get used to as a team reporter in your first year um I'm trying to think. I don't know. I've been doing media for a long time. So I feel like I've kind of seen it all in terms of like job wise. But I guess one of the like more surprising and really cool things is I've never really seen a fan base travel like the 49. <laughs> like I've never seen the support. It's awesome. I thought like I feel like my the biggest example of it was when we were in Carolina and honestly it was just a sea of red. I thought that was yeah. crazy just because, you know, I I've covered other teams and I think the Packers fan base, not necessarily travels really well. I just think there's a lot of Packers fans everywhere, but I yeah. legit think the 49ers fans like have no hesitation with traveling with the team. And I think it's awesome. I've never seen anything like it before. So it's one of the things I'm enjoying because like, a lot of stadiums don't really feel like away stadiums. So. Yeah, I don't know if it if it had ever really been that way with the Niners until like you know, the 49ers would take over like SoFi, and then after that became a thing, it was like, all right, we're everywhere. Like, everywhere. Like, yeah. yeah, exactly. So I, keep it up, guys. Yeah, I, I like going to some away games too myself. So yeah, it's definitely definitely fun they definitely show out <laughs> yeah no i mean i think it's awesome you can hear them you can see them it's 10 out of 10 <laughs> yeah, that's, that's awesome uh melissa asked did you get to meet and talk with any of the 2012 players or coaches during chiefs week um yes i did um i was actually at the mc for like one of our alumni events so I actually just I feel like all of my conversations were like fairly brief, but I also got to like help announce them on stage and stuff. Alumni weekend was really cool. I love how just the organization embraces, you know, current players, former players. It's just it really is a family. So it's great to see just everybody come back and a lot of really big names in one room. Just all the greats from the past. It's it's awesome. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure it's hard not to get Star Trek. Like, I know you've, you've probably seen like a lot of players in your time, like covering sports and everything. But like to see the legends, it's like, yeah, it's cool. <laughs> it's really, yeah. really cool. 
Yeah, definitely. Okay, let's see. Raymond asks, are you traveling to Mexico City for the game versus Arizona? If yes, what are you most excited to see? Yes, I will be traveling with uh, – I actually don't have my travel schedule yet. Oh, no. <laughs> or maybe I do and I just have missed it. Um, so I don't actually know what the week is going to look like. Um, but, yes, I will be in Mexico City. Um, I mean, I think I'm just excited to see um, Estadio Azteca because – I mean, it's supposed to be, I mean, it's an Olymp, it's an Olympic stadium. So I've never really been in one other, well, I guess the Coliseum in LA, but other than that. So I'm really excited um, just to kind of see what the atmosphere and the NFL fan base is like in Mexico. I'm sure there's a lot of people traveling from the States, but I think it's going to be great to just see what the fan base turnout is kind of on that international level, because I know there's definitely a lot of fandom in Mexico and just, you know, all over Latin America, at least beginning more and more. So we'll see what the turnout's like. I'm I'm really excited to see that. I have a feeling you're going to see a lot of 49er fans again. I do too, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think a lot of people are really hyped. And just by seeing the way the fan base has been for every other away game, I don't see why this would be different. So, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay, Melissa has one question. And I I didn't ask it, but I, I'm going to ask you anyway because it's she asked it for me, kind of. Have you seen – so I – I have put out a couple of videos with a Nick Bosa impression and like, it's gotten like a ton of views and people are like, Oh my God, like you do a crazy impression. So I don't know if you, you had seen it or if like Nick has I seen have. it. This was like the hoodie video, right? Or was that the I've one? had a couple. So I've had a couple. The first <laughs> one was like, because I heard that Nick Bosa, um, you know, since he became the, one of the captains he does like speeches on on saturdays mm -hmm. so i was like thinking to myself i can't imagine that man doing a speech because he's so like quiet and kind of monotone you know like he just his cadence is just very like um monotone in a way so i was like i wonder what that would sound like and so i did a video with that and it, it was it was pretty funny because I think I saw it on Twitter, but you'll have to send me um, <laughs> examples. I like, I want to see it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Rewatch for sure. I'll definitely send it. I won't do it right now. Like it'd be on the spot. I'd be a little nervous, but I'll definitely send you the videos. Pretty Perfect. Funny. <laughs> awesome. Well, I just have one more question for you before we head on out of here and sure. enjoy the rest of our Tuesday night. Um, <laughs> Would you have any advice or maybe even words of wisdom for, you know, women or minorities, you know, trying to break into the field of uh, sports media? Yeah, uh, I think it's I don't think it's that cliche, but I think until you have the moment in your career, it doesn't seem real. You really only need one one person, the right person to say yes, and you're going to get a lot of doors shut in your face. I definitely have. I've had my contract not renewed. You know, I've been laid off. It happens and it's awful in the moment. Um, but if you find, you know, different way, you know, work on your networking, um, you know, put new reels together, build a podcast, build a following on TikTok. There are so many different ways to get into sports media now. Like you don't have to go to like a small mo local market the way I, there's so many ways to like get around or just different pathways um, to get into sports media. And it seems so cliche to say, but you just need one person to say yes. And one person to take a chance on you. So you might get like a hundred no's, but who cares about the hundred no's? You just need, you yeah. need one. Yes. So don't be discouraged by the no's. You have to pick up a few of them before before the big yes comes. Um, and I think I feel like I'm living proof of that. So I, I cannot tell you how many job applications I have sent out and not heard anything back from. But guess what? Like the 49ers like got back to me and like this is my dream job. So, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, you well, know, no, it should not be discouraging. It's just kind of a part of the process. And it's mm -hmm. so difficult in the moment. But like hindsight's 2020, 20, right? When you actually, you know, look back and you're like, yeah, I needed those no's to get to the yes. So don't be afraid of no's. Yes. It makes it all the more sweeter, you know? Mm -hmm. Well, thank you for sharing that with us. And 
I know I'm happy, and I'm sure all the fans watching, we're all happy that the 49ers said yes to you. And, <laughs> you know, you. hopefully, you know, we'll have uh, many more years of you as the 49ers team reporter. Um, and thank you so much for coming on the pod and, and joining me today. This was a lot of fun. And I, I think we, we accomplished being able to, you know, give the faithful a little glimpse of, you know, yeah, who you thank are you. And, uh, so they could get to know you a little bit better. Yeah, I appreciate it so much. I had a lot of fun and we'll do it again sometime. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you so much once again. And thank you guys for watching. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure that you uh, <laughs> like this video if you have not yet. Come on, let's get those likes up. And for the audio listeners, make sure that you leave a rating. Appreciate you guys. Have a good rest of your Tuesday night. And make sure you go out and vote, okay? Fill out yes. your civil duties. And uh, have a good rest of your night, guys. Peace.